Good morning, dear friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, Rochester, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we rejoice the great day of Christmas. Our Lord Jesus Christ is born this day. And so there's glad tidings, greetings that flood our hearts with joy, that our God is one with us. To prepare ourselves now to celebrate the sacred mysteries, especially on this Christmas morning, let us ask the Lord for pardon and forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to, to pray, pray for, for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, Your God is King. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry, together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord comforts his people, he redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpet and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and in various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, 
whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory and the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 A holy day has dawned upon us. Nations and adore the Lord, for today a great light has come upon the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life. And this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for a testimony to testify the, to the light, so that all may be, might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. 
and the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory of, as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is my great blessing to be able to wish all of you on this Christmas morning a very blessed and holy Christmas. And especially to those who are at home because of illness, we especially unite you in closeness with us in this liturgy. I'm here at our beautiful Basilica of St. Stanislaus Koska, and joining with me and extending to you Christmas greetings is Father Patrick Arns, the rector of the Basilica, and also with me are many of our seminarians from Immaculate Heart of Mary Seminary. You pray for them, and now you get to see that as you pray for vocations, the Lord is answering our call for helpers to come for the harvest. So thank you for your prayers and our seminarians today. Join me in thanking you for your very faithful and holy lives that have inspired them as you inspire me as the bishop and all the priests who have the privilege to serve you. So Merry Christmas, thank you for being a gift to the church and to our diocese. I remember one Christmas because it stood out for me more than any other. My dad had been working long hours. In fact, my dad would come home late and we could always see how tired my dad was. Well, normally we would get the Christmas tree before Christmas, but this particular year, it was almost the 24th, and we didn't have a tree yet. But somehow we didn't want to bother our dad. But one night, right before Christmas, really on Christmas Eve, he said, let's get a tree. Well, we all lit up because we know how much joy that brings. But when we went to, in those days, the Christmas tree lot, there were very few. In fact, those that were there, the few were covered in snow. And the man said, if you can find one, please, shake it, get the snow off, and see if it meets your expectations. I remember going at night, and these electric bulbs were all that would illuminate the snow. So we really didn't know what we were getting. But my dad said, what do you think? And he pointed at one of the trees. Well, we were just so happy to have a tree. We took the tree home. But we realized shortly after we got it home that it was much too tall. Now I realize, at the age that I'm at, when you're exhausted, you take the easiest route. My dad 
Instead of cutting from the bottom of the tree, he cut from the top of the tree so that when my dad stood up the tree, it looked like a rectangular bush. And my mom, who saw it, all she could say is to my dad, oh, George, how could you? So my dad said, get some electrical tape. And sure enough, we tried to put the top back on, and my dad cut some more, or cut some off the bottom. And we finally got it to stand up. But as you know, we really had done harm to that tree. When we put the lights on and put the ornaments, it didn't take long before the top of that tree, even with all of the electricity flowing through those lights, it collapsed. And there we were, with half a tree in the living room. I always remember it. And the reason why, Christmas is not about perfection. Christmas is not about snow and trees and finding the perfect gift. Christmas is about the story of how God has so loved us that he sent his only son. That gospel that was sung by Father Arns, says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word is God. We are not saved by an idea. God the Father chose to send us his Son, the eternal Word, and that Word became flesh so that we could become divine. Not only did that word become flesh, but as a baby, that word enfleshed in the womb of Mary and then born so that he would show us he had lifted our humanity. And in our imperfection, in our sinfulness, we have been given a new and eternal destiny. The first gift of Christmas is the fact that our God is so in love with us. Not only in love with us, but has come to rescue us, to take us, not only from our sinfulness, but to raise us to eternal life. That our eternal home is not in this world or with things, or with merchandise, but it is being with the triune God and all the saints in heaven. The Word became flesh, emptied himself of glory, became the light that shines in the darkness so that you and me and all on this planet, all who have lived here, can be raised up to know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Since God has given us his Son as the first gift, remember in our lives to value the gift of life. The Word became flesh, became a baby. How important it is for us as Christians to defend human life to defend it from the moment of conception because our Savior was conceived by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin. Human life is precious and we show the gift of Christmas, our belief in the Incarnation every time we speak up for life and try and protect human life. The second thing is that beautiful first reading that reminds us that we are to bring the good news to others. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news on the mountain, meaning to the peripheries, to the places that need the light of Christ. In our culture, 
We know of brokenness. We see violence. But the good news is that's not the end. The destiny to which God calls us is reconciliation. He calls us to a gospel that brings life and peace, gives us courage to step into the world with a message about human life, but about Jesus Christ. During this time, you might want to invite someone, especially who's been away from church. I know with COVID-19, it's not so easy to get together. But someone who's been away, you can pray for them. You can send them an email. Put a card on their porch. Let them know you are their prayer partner and you're trying to bring good news. You might do that with a phone call to someone in a nursing home who is lonely and afraid and has no visitors, but you can come, be the feet that brings the good news of the gospel by caring and love. And most of all, that second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, how important it is we see God's plan. God spoke in fragmentary ways. God has been at work preparing for this incarnation so that he could become one of us. That incarnation is intentional. It is real. It is a sign of hope. God has never given up on any of us. He is here to redeem us and assure us the future belongs to God and that each one of us, when we believe in his providence, creation is different. The direction of life and all that goes into it, the peace that should radiate from us, comes from seeing God's plan. You and I are to be a people of hope, to bring hopefulness into our world, especially as we continue to battle COVID-19, as we realize how much we need each other, how much we miss one another, but that doesn't stop us from praying for one another, for caring for one another, and being the hope of God in the world. Every time I look at the manger scene, I'm amazed. The Word became flesh in a very imperfect world. The Word became flesh so that I could share in divine life to raise me up, so that I could be a gift of the good news because it's first been experienced by me, and now bring the joy of the Incarnation to others. Well, I'll never forget that Christmas tree. It's the only one we ever talk about, and yet it was so imperfect. Maybe that's why God's so in love with us. So imperfect, so in need, but so loved, so that our eternal home would one day be with him in heaven. May this baby, who's filled our day with joy, the gift of the Father, the very impress of the Father's being, may he reveal to us his plan and be for us the hope that brings peace to this land and to our people. We look today, Christ is born, the gift of the Father. Let's us now be a gift to one another. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. For the church throughout the world, that all may rejoice at the coming of the Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that it may know the peace which only Christ can give, and that all people may serve and worship the one true God, who is Christ the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For those in need of material and spiritual goods, that Christ may fill all desires and wants, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer for an end to the pandemic, and that all will find peace in the coming of the Lord, even in the midst of uncertainty and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, that the Lord may bring them to the eternal peace and joy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you have given us your only Son, the eternal Word, who has become born of the Virgin Mary for our sake. In the joy of his nativity, he is the first gift to us. Help us now in our lives to revere this mystery, this mystery of love. And may we take seriously your call to be good news, especially to those in need. Keep us faithful till the day you call us to live with you and all the saints in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, that we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the whole host of powers of heaven, we join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer to you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and for me, your unworthy servant, and for all of those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For, though, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. Or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day, on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world. And in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your holy family, which we offer now in the days to bring us peace and the command that he offered to us to be among those who are his flock for whom he has given his life. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings and with a serene and kindly countenance to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, 
open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, you bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and, and with him, him and, and in him, him O God, God Almighty, Almighty Father, in, in the, the unity Lord, of the Holy Spirit, all, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead, lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us, us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord, not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be even that of immortality. We ask this for he who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And on behalf of all of us here at the Basilica, we wish all of you a very blessed Christmas day. Remember, Christmas is an octave. It goes on for eight full days, and we really have the 12 days of Christmas that bring us to the Feast of Epiphany. So continue the celebration that today a Savior is born to us. Bring, even in our imperfection, the great news that this day a Savior is born to us, that God and man are joined forever, and one day he will bring us to eternal life. Let that be the glad tidings that flows from our churches into our world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Joy to the world. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. If this Mass has helped you or someone you know, please consider sending a donation to the address on the screen or by visiting our website at dowr.org and clicking the weekly Mass icon. Thank you and God bless. From all of us to all of you, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas.